Hey guys, Audox Studios here, and today we're going to go over um, adding split screen support or just adding split screen to the Couch Co op multiplayer template. So, a Patreon member asked if I could go over that really quickly. Um, on a quick note, this is the Unreal Engine 5.3 version of the Couch Co op multiplayer template, and I am using Unreal Engine 4 5.4 preview. Um, and the reason for that is, and I go on over how to convert or migrate a 5.3 project to 5.4 preview in a previous video. Um, so if you go to my video list, it's the video right before this one. But the reason for that is the input settings um, for skipping player controller when you're testing. So you can skip assigning the gamepad to player one. So this will leave player one on the keyboard and it'll allow player two to be a gamepad. And that's been bugged out since Unreal Engine 5.1. Um, they just fixed it in the 5.4 preview. So that's the reason I'm using that engine version to kind of go over this tutorial. So um, you, if you know, to, know the Couch Co-op multiplayer template well, you know I use inheritance um, for different game modes for side scroller for the couch co-op mode where it's a top-down type of thing um, there's a wire locked and a wide limited movement mode that's dictated by you know those game modes um, if you want something that's going to be able to do a hybrid solution switch between split screen and the camera manager then I would suggest going and grabbing like a plugin or writing your own C++ module because if you're going to rely on the engine native split screen setting that's here, um, it isn't going to support that capa like that capacity of being able to swap things at runtime. The other thing that you're not going to get out of the engine split screen is the ability to kind of like enable and disable it on the fly like this dynamic view right so um it's gonna basically generate a screen or a viewport for every local index that it detects um so you'll notice whenever we hit start here in a minute i'm going to create four controllers and thus the engine's going to create four split screen uh viewports so if i hit play as you can see without anything um, you have four. Uh, you still get the HUD that stretches across the entire screen, which is ideal. That's what we want. But if we were to hit enter on player one, we now have player one over here. If I hit start on the other controller, I have player two over here. Um, each one of these viewports are sharing the camera manager at this point. So it all works. It's all split screen. However, the camera manager is still doing the math to keep both players in the viewport. So if this is something that you want to work on and maybe like you control the camera manager to kind of stick to one character and then you handle the averaging a little bit differently, um, cool. Um, but if it's not what you want and you want each person to have 100% control of their own camera, then we're going to have to approach this a little bit differently. Um, so first and foremost, we'll be able to get rid of the camera manager. Um, now, again, uh, because you can't really change a lot of this behavior at runtime, the way the split screen works, you don't have to worry about inheritance. You can just kind of do this. Um, across the board for the couch co-op game mode so we'll get rid of this um and now if we hit play you'll see that we're gonna get some errors in the output log and we're gonna get this you know the camera is now stuck to the player type of thing so um let's go uh find out what's gonna error real quick um And I think one of the first things that's going to air out is, um, and I went through this exercise earlier, uh, is the blueprint for the zip line. There is this set, set actor tick enabled, and that is done on this trigger. 
um, and the trigger is actually fired. Um, I want to say by an overlap event. Yeah. So as soon as you overlap it, it's going to enable actor tick and that's going to try to update the world rotation of the widget or the text display text renderer, and that's going to air out on you. So you will want to disable this and also um, just ensure that start with tick enabled is not checked um, for the actor, not the component. Um, so it's here. So that will fix that. And then you're likely going to be getting the same thing for this checkpoint because it uses the um, the tick event, or it may use the tick event. This is the player start. Where is checkpoint? Yeah. So you'll want to do the same thing. Disable tick on it and then uh, unpin the set world rotation from the camera manager since we no longer have a camera manager. <laughs> um, and that should correct those two things. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is come to the couch co-op game mode and you're gonna want to find this section inside of the spawn detectors function at the very end, you're going to want to unpin this set view target with blend um, because you don't want the camera manager to become the view target at all. Um, the next thing is right here where we're spawning the input detector, we know we need to go look at that class because that's what's handling the viewport as well. So if we hit start, you can see we're looking to see if there is a child reference and then we spawn the player. So if you click into spawn the player, you will see it's also setting the view target with blend. We no longer need to do that. We want it to take the actual camera from the player. So the next thing is, I uh, believe the match started function. It uses the camera manager so there's um let me see yeah so it's going to pass an event to the camera manager and call it you're going to want to stick this get validate like or you're want to convert the camera manager variable into a validated get and this will keep this from erroring out on you as well um and then after that you should be done with at least the setup to get the viewport where you want it to be at. Now, what you'll recognize or notice here is we don't have any camera controls and um, the axis value for move forward and move right and left is not correct because it's based on the top-down perspective of the camera manager. Um, so we'll need to go into the third person character um, and the good news is, is we have this stashed off in the template and says saved, used for later, right? So what we need to do in order to use that um, is we need to make a, a look action. So we can just duplicate this. I move, name it look. And then um, I think make sure that all of this is good it looks like it is then we need to go to the content or the mapping context and we're gonna add i look here and then we are going to Make sure that you have the mouse X, Y to the axis in as the look. And we are going to put a negate modifier um, and you also want to make sure that X and Z are not ticked on the gate and Y is the only thing ticked. And then you'll want to 
add the gamepad right thumbstick to the axis as well with a dead zone otherwise you'll get some really nasty <laughs> controller drifting going on there so we'll add that in and we'll hit save and then um, we still shouldn't have any input so and we don't so now we need to actually make use of this so I'm going to make a new little section down here um, now if you're familiar with the template you know that there's movement modes X locked Y locked etc there's a default Y locked and Y limited movement type we don't really need those anymore for this type of setup um, we also don't need to move events anymore because we're not handling all of these this additional logic anymore so you can pretty much just clean all of that up real quick um, the other thing is the saved for later use um, I'm pretty sure we can just make sure I'm thinking about this right yeah so we have the control rotation we'll break the vector um, left and right movement if I remember correctly We're gonna use the X value. So this needs to go here. And then we use the right vector here. But I need to make sure. Yeah. Yep. And then we can literally copy this, and paste it, because we want to do something very similar for the up and yeah, the forward vector with the y value. Um, and then we'll just clean this up a tad. And good thing I had this stashed off a little bit, huh? Let's test this. Make sure that I'm getting forward and backwards right. Yep, forward, backwards, left, right. All right. So now the next thing is going to be uh, the camera stuff. So down here, I'm going to do IA look. And then we are going to need to split this. And we're going to add controller and we're going to need to pitch add controller and we're going to need y'all and we can pipe the y'all into X and the pitch into Y. And I think we should be good. Yep. Now I'm going to test on the controller real quick. Yep. Right stick is good. Everything on the left analog stick is good. So that is the quickest way to get to a split screen, your own viewport, uh, 
game setup that still gives you, you know, the press enter, press start, or if you were on a controller or the player one, press start. That's the quickest way to get to point from point A to point Z. Um, again, if you're gonna want to do something more complicated than this, um, you're either gonna have to modify the way that the camera manager works so that it kind of gives you this top-down perspective, but it focuses on one player until both players come into, I guess, the viewport of a player, and then you could do the calculation. It's gonna get a little hairy. I'm gonna be frank with you on that. Um, the other option is to go grab a plugin off the marketplace that has a lot of built-in features that support split screen, but handles it within like a C++ extension module for the engine. Or you can use the built-in settings like I just did here and um, modify the uh, way that you're gonna control the camera for, for the point of view of the split screen. Anyway, um, happy developing. Um, you guys like and subscribe. Um, remember to check out the Patreon. Um, if you already are a Patreon member, I wanna say thank you. Um, your support is what allows me to continue to make assets, put you know videos like this up, um, and also like the freebies that I have over there for the free members on my Patreon channel and also the tools and plugins that are you know, for the subscribers, um, you guys make all of this possible. So thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the suggestion. Thanks for the question from the, you know, the people on Patreon that were wondering how to do this and, uh, see you in the next video. Toodles.